<coughs> I don't have to tell you guys that music can be meaningful, really meaningful. But to have meaning is a sort of an extra thing that you have to think about when it comes to the demented brain. And we have a, a lots of projects have been going on in the world trying this in different different forms. But uh, we have here today representatives of an extremely interesting project, uh, where in a systematic way uh, they have explored the issues and the ability to use music in, uh, in therapy with patients where, where you have a degrading mental function. So please welcome on stage Dan Cohen, founder of Music and Memory, and whose work is documented in Alive Inside. Please, Michael Rosato Bennett, writer, director, and producer of Alive Inside, and the executive director of Alive Inside Foundation. And Ital Shur, uh, who, who composed the score of the film, please. So you promised me you would tell me all about this. Who's going to start? Um, I'll start. You, you start. Sure. So in 2006, I'm a social worker. I have a career in technology companies. And on the radio, I heard uh, a journalist talking about how iPods are ubiquitous. They're everywhere. And I thought, well, that may be true for young people, a lot of us older adults, but certainly didn't ring true uh, about nursing homes and music. And so I Googled iPods and nursing homes, and I couldn't find one. In the US, there are 16,000 nursing homes that was giving people their music. And so I called a nearby facility. I said, I know music's already your number one recreational activity. You have live musicians come in. You have a lot of music. But um, can I come in and just set up pers totally personalize the music for people? And, and, uh, and that was an instant hit for people. Um, and I came back every couple of weeks. I wouldn't just say, here's your music that you said to me. No, let's get rid of the stuff that's so-so. We're all used to listening to so-so music. And by tailoring the music, we ended up just really helping to light up people, uh, help them be more attentive, engaged uh, with life, uh, feel more in touch with themselves, uh, regardless of whether they had dementia or not, or whether they were in pain, or they had difficulty speaking or moving. Um, music, music that they loved, really helped move them forward. And from then on, how did, it, how did it grow? Tell me. So, you know, I did this for a while, and I'd kind of um, tell my friends, you know, this is what I'm doing. And they go, um, this, you should see the reaction I'm getting from people. And they go, oh, how nice, Dan, you're bringing the old people music. Yeah. And I go, no, no, you don't get it. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing is really significant. And I was unable to communicate verbally what I was seeing. And I said, I really needed to get someone to film this so I could, people could witness this directly. Uh, and so I was able to get in touch with Michael, uh, come in just for an afternoon and, and to uh, document this. Um, and I'll let Mike take it <laughs> from there. Um, yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so we, we basically made a movie about awakening, about um, how people who have dementia, who've lost so much of their, their selves, are able to wake up. And um, it, 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 awakening to me is just this really primal and, and, and pivotal thing for all of us. And I, you know, I, I was sitting over here and I've been listening to speakers and everything and I thought maybe we should kind of try a little awakening here <laughs> well. with all of you, you know, to kind of, kind, of, kind of just sort of in action feel what we're talking about. And um, um, we work with, with kids as well. And this is a little exercise that I do with the kids when I'm trying to train them on how to become more empathetic, how to be the ones who um, find the music for the elders themselves. So are you willing to do a little thing with me? Yeah? Okay, great. Um, how many of you are singers? Okay, there's a few. How many of you sing in the, um, how many of you sing in the shower? <laughs> or in the car? Okay, so great, great, you can all work with me. So we're gonna sing, kind of sing three words, okay? And because it's, it's about music, and music is about how we sort of connect with ourselves, with the, with the people we love, and with, with life itself. Okay, so the three words we're going to sing are I, you, and we. Okay, we're going to do the ah uh, part of I, I, and we're going to do the you, we're going to do that, and we're going to do the e sound of we, okay? And I'm not a singer at all. This is just something that we created when we were working with these kids. So 
here's what I want. I'm gonna conduct it, and you're gonna make it build really big, okay? And then you harmony people are gonna throw some harmony in, and it's gonna be glorious, and it's gonna have a touch of sadness to it, just to make it kind of cool. All right, you ready? We're gonna do, we're gonna do I. Ready? One, two, three, four. Ah. Nice. Okay, let me have a little more sadness in the in the U, just so I feel that little tug on my heart. Okay, ready? One, two, three, four. You. we'll do we, okay? And that E sound, try and just make it penetrate all of our beings. Ready? One, two, three, four. We. Okay, before this is over, I'll tell you why we're doing, why we did this. And so we learned a tremendous amount, Dan and I, making alive inside, going into nursing homes, dealing with people um, who've, who've lost, lost so much. Has anybody seen the clip of Henry that uh, went viral worldwide from the film? I see some nods mm -hmm. here. So Dan, basically I was dead broke and our friend Rachel from uh, the Rubin Foundation who uh, was his main supporter, called me up one day and said, you know, Mike, you know, I got a job for you. <laughs> you know, you can, you can film this guy. And I was like, okay. And so Dan took me into a nursing home, a, a 600 bed public nursing home. I don't know if anybody's been in a facility like this ever, but I, I walked in there like any, you know, oh, I'm going to do something good, you know? And then I, I walked through this gauntlet. Uh, these, these elders were just in their wheelchairs, li lining the walls, like literally like this. And like, you know, like, like, like that. And I literally wanted to run. You know, it, I saw nothing of any value in this place and in this space. And then, Dan had been working with this, um, a, a day later, he'd been working with this 94-year-old um, man named Henry, and he's the man who's, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna show you the trailer to the film since we can't show you the whole film. Um, he's in the trailer. And basically, he literally sat like this in his chair in a corner for 10 whole years, 10 years. And I did not know what to expect. You know, I was like you, just unknowing. And Henry came up and, and then Yvonne gave him his music. He put, put headphones on with, was it gospel or Cab Calloway? Or it was gospel, Cab Calloway. And um, this man, I mean, Oliver Sacks actually says it best in the clip that went viral, but um, you know, uh, he woke up and he started to move and he started to sing. Woo and his eyes were bugging out and, and there was like 10 of us in the room. And when, th when this person went from this to this with nothing else but the music of his youth, of his childhood, it like literally sent shivers up all of our spines, okay? When somebody wakes up from, from gone to alive, it does something to you deep inside of your soul. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? When your kid walks, when your ch children cry, when, you're, when the person you love is happy, you know, like these things just leap when you hear that song that, you know, how many times Dan and I have, 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 have been working with somebody with dementia and, you know, then we find like the song, their wedding song, and suddenly, they, they dance, you know, or they, they, they smile or sing, you know, like this, 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 this music has a deep, deep power. Anyway, when Henry woke up, like as a, just as an, you know, I was so naive, I thought that we'd discovered the cure to Alzheimer's. I literally thought that, 
I did. I was like, <laughs> it's a bit optimistic, <laughs> maybe, but <laughs> I thought that. So um, at some point, we should show them the trailer. Well, we should do it now. Oh, we should do it now so that we we hang people to the discuss, get people into okay. the discussion. Please. Can we roll the trailer to the film? What do you think of music? My heart belongs to music. I love it. Have you ever had music just hit you in a place that immediately brought you to tears? Music has that power. Music connects people with who they have been, who they are, and their lives. Because what happens when you get old is all the things you're familiar with and your identity are all just being peeled away. healthcare system imagines the human to be a very complicated machine. We have medicines that can adjust the dials. Blood pressure, oh, turn that down. Blood sugar, oh, turn that down. We haven't done anything to touch the heart and soul of a patient. I'm a man on fire, walking through your street. Music has more ability to activate more parts of the brain than any other stimulus. Who am I? Who am I? I'm your daughter. By exciting or awakening those pathways, we have a gateway to stimulate and reach somebody who otherwise is unreachable. Come dance with me. Takes me back to my school days. Oh, God, that's, that's beautiful. Does it make you happy to sing for us? Yeah. Oh, God. Every human being needs stimulation from the outside, from little babies to old people. American culture is wrong. There is actually life beyond adulthood. There's the opportunity to live and grow and become elders. The aging that we experience holds in it very important learnings and lessons. There is no pill that does that. <laughs> Come dance with me. Uh, oh, thank you so much. OK, so there's a, a tears of joy. Yeah. I thought you were going to grow wings. I was trying. <laughs> 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 to me, uh, to me, when I saw the movie, it was uh, there were two things that struck me. One of them was, of course, the emotional uh, reaction that you can, uh, which is of an uh, sort of an extreme human quality when you when you see it. But I would like to ask you whether, uh, what the effects were on the people in the nursing home, the uh, the staff. So How were they influenced? You know, when you go to work every day and someone, I don't want to be bathed now, leave me alone, I don't want that shot. Um, it's stressful on the staff. Or with mm -hmm. Alzheimer's disease, people can get agitated and even sort of strike out. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a stressor, right? It could take two or three people to help get somebody to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, but if they have their music, um, that uh, the agitation um, dissipates and the resistance to care dramatically uh, plummets, which makes life easier They have uh, for staff. Staff has more cooperative uh, individuals they're working with, and their day is better. Uh, you know, uh, Mrs. Jones in the morning, she's in, you know, getting up in half the time uh, that it takes usually. So we, we find these kinds of statistics coming back. Um, so staff morale goes up, the feeling, the mood, and an entire institution changes mm -hmm. when everybody's got their music. It's something else everybody can talk about that's a common language. It's not just, oh, take care of this person, you know, dress everybody. It's instead of just good morning, it's in a nice day, hey, you know, I know you really love this sound song, let's sing it or let's put it on a speaker or something. So you get a better and a more friendly context. Yes. So to speak. Yes. And uh, t tell me about uh, your part in this. Well, I mean, I was the composer for all the music for the movie, which was hard because I had to write music about music. I mean, I had to compose music mm -hmm. about the effects of music. But there was a, so much emotion of people just changing their whole dimensional existence from just being lost and forgotten and feeling sad and lonely to awakening, having some happiness in their life. And, and that was the challenge for me to do it. And then, you know, it inspired me beyond uh, just making the movie. I mean, being a composer, it started to shift the way I was thinking about music and what it can actually do for people as a musician. And it started to inspire me to see that, you know, music 
is much greater than the immediate effects of entertainment or you know, the initial effects that you get as a musician, as a creator, and you say, wow, I've got something magic that I'm dealing with, and, and, and the fact that that actually is true, especially with these people in the movie who music touches a place in them that no, no, no drug can touch, and it's more effective in, this, in, in, in a, in a life-giving kind of way. Mm-hmm. That, that, that changed my whole attitude. Not, it didn't change it. I was always like that, but it reaffirmed it. That's what I would like to say. It reaffirmed it. And it, 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 it reaffirmed the, deep, the deepest level of what music's about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I have to agree with my brother. We, we've, we actually have been on a huge journey in, in the um, making of this film. And, um, and, and we, we've learned so much we learned more about music than, than we'd ever known and learned how to experience music. Um, you remember in the trailer, there's the, the woman, she says, um, she says, uh, you know, I, I said to her, I thought you were trying to grow wings. And, and, and Dan says to her, you know, those are tears of joy, right? And, and um, anyway, her name's Mary Lou. And she had very advanced Alzheimer's. And so when people have really advanced Alzheimer's, they're unable to parse the environment that, that they live in. Like, they can't filter out sounds. And, and life just becomes a, a, a very frustrating experience. And with Mary Lou, you know, um, we gave her uh, the, the Beach Boys, I Get Around, and she just, just, it was so amazing to watch the transformation. I mean, literally, she was like this, like, <laughs> And, and then Dan gave her some, her music, and, and she, then she was just like, I, I can go, let's go, let's go. You know, because the music, she can navigate 100%, mm-hmm. you know? And, 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 the, and <laughs> I forgot where I was going with that, with Mary Lou. But, oh, so what I was gonna say is, oh, so one day, you know, after filming Mary Lou, I kind of had a, a shock. Because I was like, this woman with dementia is actually experiencing her music deeper than I experienced music. And so what I did was I went home in my bedroom and I got all my favorite music, I turned off all the lights, I put on my headphones, and I I said, I'm not leaving my bedroom until I can listen to music like she's listening Mm -hmm. to music, you know? it took a while, but then I started to do it, and I started to feel like the, the music in, in, my, in my being. You know, we, modern culture, has sort of relegated music to a thing. Like, we, we relegate everything. You know, this is my, my land, my crop, my 401k, my, my this, my that, my building, my, you know. We've done amazing things turning the world into things, right? We've built this place. You couldn't build this place without the capacity to think. But anthropologists have looked at us, at us modern humans with our phones and our computers, and they've looked at at primitive societies, and you know what they, they discovered? Our social skills, our capacity for connection has actually diminished. You know, and some of these people that like Dan and I have have worked with, like they come from a different time. They come from a different time. They come from a different world. You know, like today I I knew I was going to speak, so I didn't bring my iPhone. I I left it in the hotel room. I feel so free. I must (laughs) try that one day. (laughs) It's that's cold. That's good. But uh, I mean, apart, apart from closing off the, the <laughs> iPhone, there is one thing in the, uh, uh, the, the time structure of music, the rhythm, is something that uh, sort of you don't need a lot of capacity in order to sort of have a recognition in the, ri- in the rhythm. Thereby you can sort of uh, get an organized sensory perception of that enough to sort of anticipate what's going to come in the next one to, to do. To do, and uh, so it, it, the, the it's very interesting the the ability, as you say, you, I think you phrased it very well by saying that the sort of the filters out, mm. 
Mm -hmm. It's gone straight to the brainstem, straight to, to where the business is done in the limbic system, straight mm -hmm. da down in the basement. And we never let things in the basement. It's, so, it's supposed to be unpolite in our society. And, uh, but there are treasures in the basement. There, there are treasures in the basement. That's where sex and drugs and rock and roll is. The, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's go in the basement, everybody. So, no, okay. so ba ba basically, uh, uh, I mean, what you're doing in a very systematic way is that you, to me, uh, one of the most valuable things with this one is, of course, uh, first, first and foremost, the ability sort of the, to wake emotions of a very positive side in people who otherwise experience very little positive things. But the other thing is really the contextual difference that you, you make for that whole setting in the, in the nursing home when you, you suddenly you, you wake people up to, to a, a level where they are not seen as a care package, so to speak, rather as a, as a person, as an individual. You bring them back to be a, a, a real social, uh, social being. Mm. And to me, the, the wonders that you, you, you demonstrate in that film of how important it is to also look at the sort of non-pharmacological side of, uh, of nursing home in order to, to uh, in essence, maintain dignity as you, as you go along. And I think that, that's a wonderful way of looking at it. I'd like to preface uh, what I hope will be Dan's answer to this. So, um, <laughs> I, I, I would, be <laughs> this film, um, you know, it, it was miraculous. Miraculously, we, a clip from it went viral worldwide. Miraculously, we got into Sundance. Miraculously, we won Sundance and about 10 other film festivals. Um, this, when, since the film has come out, like when we were making the film, no one in the world knew this power, except some music therapists and some scientists. Mm. Literally in the last couple of years, so, since, since the film has come out and you know, since Dan has been working so hard, I, I believe that we've made a shift in the world, that the world actually knows the power of music. And Dan, maybe you could tell people like how, like the level of penetration that, that you have managed to accomplish. Well, before I get to that, let me get specific for Sweden. So 40% uh, of the people that have uh, Alzheimer's disease or other form of dementia uh, have a more advanced form of the disease. And when you have an advanced uh, dementia, you, you know, people, you're perceived as no longer being able to experience pleasure. Exactly. So you're just left, so it's sort of people, well, of course, they can't experience pleasure, so why bother? So people are sitting right now, so that's 50,000 people in Sweden who are really there. Their emotional systems are very much intact because music connects with our emotional systems. It's not a cognitive, oh, I like this song. No, it's gut. It's passing whatever is deteriorated up here. You can't recognize your own family member, but boy, you know that song. Um, and so it's those 50,000 people that are ripe for reaching, just like Henry. And mm -hmm. you could do that as simply as digging for what music was personally meaningful to them when they were young. Um, so yeah, so now music and memory, this approach is, is operating in 2,900 plus nursing homes and hospices and hospitals and home care programs and adult day programs uh, in every state in the US, Canadian province and uh, six additional countries to those globally. And we're um, really looking to make this a standard of care. This is a no brainer. There is no downside. You can't hurt anybody with this. There's no, there's no side effects that are negative. The worst case scenario, scenario is it does not work for someone. And usually that's because we can't figure out what music really turns them on. But if we can get that, then we win and we win for the rest of their lives. And then the music can follow them through the healthcare system. So if someone is home and healthy now that you know, all the elders in your family that are home and healthy, if you set them up with their playlist now, they can enjoy them now the way we do, many of us, and then should they have a heart issue or whatever, go into a hospital or nursing home um, or deteriorate in some way, uh, they'll have that set to go and, and have that enjoyment no matter what happens to them, cognitively or physically. I mean, the spread that you... you uh uh, this, I, I love the, the way you, you put it. We want to put it into the standards of care because uh, that's really one of the big issues. I'm, I'm part of a big uh, international standardization for uh, tr trying to uh, figure out what real quality is in the frail elderly, care of the frail elderly. And, and uh, I realized uh, that, that bringing this work into the, the work group, there were lots of patients organizations as well, they, all of them were sitting like, 
Yeah, we haven't thought about it, and uh, it's really it's really a movement that you've started. I, I I must congratulate you on that one. Well, I think the movie, to my surprise, has gone you know, and really based on what you're saying, also is that people are being educated about the disease. You know, Alzheimer's society in Sweden and mm -hmm. throughout Europe and the world are frustrated because people don't get it. Oh, they've got Alzheimer's. My relative has Alzheimer's. I'm done with them. They don't know who I am. But they're not there. Uh, but now, you know, now they understand. Yes, they're very much there. And I can really light up my favorite term. Uh, Grandma, or Grandpa, and and get and keep them in the family, keep them themselves, keep them enjoying life. Uh, it's not a cure, but it will, you know, as they decline physically, it might keep them going this way, or might even, you know, have them get even better cognitively. Mm. And the the re the relation with that they can build uh, with the care people and also the yes. people around is just right. wonderful. And it takes an interdisciplinary team. One thing we've we've learned: it's not oh the music, mm -hmm. the activities per people in a, in a nursing home. No, it's nur this is a nursing intervention. Doctors need to be involved. Nurses need to be involved. Social workers. It's everybody. Everybody can talk this music language. Everybody can be involved. Everybody can um, build on this. Mm -hmm. And, and unfortunately, the part of the drugs that are handed out uh, so graciously also dampen this response, of course, uh, which means that th this has to be done in collaboration with the, uh, with the nursing staff and the uh, doctor staff. So I had a chance to speak to a thousand doctors uh, a few couple of months a ago. A thousand doctors. I, that, I usually that, speak that to that one. Chief, <laughs> chief medical officers in nursing homes mm -hmm. in the U.S. Um, and I was I was really uh, delighted uh, to see how open they were. I thought, oh no, you know, no, they get music too, and and you know the movie will help. The discussion will. Help. They're looking for alternatives because they know these drugs double and triple mortality rates. You know, yeah. anti triple mortality drugs. rates. Okay. They uh, triple the dental problems. Which goes against the very core of what they're yeah. about. And yeah. so they're open. But they need solutions, and so here we have one. They just, they're looking for them. It's, you can't find it in another pill. Very often doctors go, oh, this pill doesn't work, we'll try another one. Oh, that one doesn't work. Oh, oh, there are side effects. Let's add two more. And then they have 15, 20 pills. And they dare and that call kills it science, them. I know. Anyway. <laughs> so I, I, I would like to add one, one thing here that I feel is very important. Um, we, uh, uh, not, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, there's uh, about a million people, I think, with uh, dementia in nursing homes in America, but there's, four million people that live at home, okay? And, and we love to talk about, um, you know, clinical solutions, and, and it's very, we, that's very important. It's brilliant and important work. But I just want to remind people that, that music is, is, is magic. You know, it's not a drug. It's something that we actually pulled into our very DNA. There's no animal on this planet that does music like we do. We do music in, um, you know, a, a primate will not respond to a beat, baby, but a human baby will. We've pulled it into our DNA, it's, it's epigenetically. And it, it, I believe that music has things, has gifts that are far beyond sort of the clinical, although I love the clinical and I, I love all the progress we're making. You know, like we are at a, at a critical time in our world where we need to find new ways to live in harmony with life. And I think that music and empathy are our two, um, you know, tools that we as human beings have. And we have to become profound in them. And what I'm doing is working with kids. And what I've found is that these, these kids who are right now just spending their life looking like this, like when you put the phone down and you put these 12 and 13 and 15 year old kids in front of people with dementia, they can, can, can literally give their whole heart and, 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 and wake them, find their music. And I think there's something in this that is a clue for what we need to do as humans. Like how can we live you know, in harmony with each other, with the, with the world and, and, and with life itself? And, and, and I believe the answer is in music. And, so we're going to uh, gonna end with uh, three words from each, each of you. What's the next step? Because uh, obviously you guys have a, have a lot of fire in you to go further. Well, I just want to say everything that they're saying is great. And I just, as a musician, I'm just sort of here to galvanize more of the music community and people all the people who sing in the shower, like if you have an elder, sing with them at home. You know, uh, if you're a musician, 
put some value to yourself helping people. It's really hard to make money in the music business all the time. But if you add value to your time to make a lonely person happy, a forgotten person happy, or whatever, or, you, or we're trying to find new ways to bring people together to do this, we want to add value to this, this, this kind of giving. Thank you. Uh, well, yeah. thank you. So um, on the musicandmemory.org website, there's a free PDF on how to create a personalized playlist for your loved ones. So for those of you who say, I'd like to do it, but how do I do it? What are the tips and tricks and such? Boom, it's a free guide. Just take Just it, use it, it, so you can start today. Love that. All right, I want to use this platform for a, one second. Any record companies and record executives and, and gr big artists out there, let's make a dementia l a library where people with dementia worldwide can figure out, can get their music for free. They made all the value that you have in your catalogs. Now it's time to give them back their music. Hackers, figure out how we can do this so that we can, we can do it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and track all the data so that people get paid uh, and they don't get upset. So now we're getting uh, political here and I see Come it states over time. But I think we should thank you and congratulate you to this wonderful project and all your prizes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.